Hi, I am Debbie McLean, and uh, I am the Global Operations Control Hiring and Training Manager. Some of the ways that um, what we're doing here is trying to introduce different career paths that are available to you that are a little that are not only pilot paths but other different paths within the aviation community. So one of the uh, jobs that I'd like to tell you about is flight dispatch. A flight dispatch is a FAA issued license very similar to a private instrument commercial what have you. But as a flight dispatcher, we maintain joint responsibility with the pilot in control with the safety and operation control of a flight. We analyze and evaluate meteorological conditions and determine potential hazards and the safety of flight to ensure the most uh, desirable and economic route of the flight for each flight of the day. Um, we prepare flight plans containing information such as max allowable takeoff weights, including weather reports, field conditions, notams, and many other informational components required for the safe completion of a flight. So what are the requirements to be hired as a flight dispatcher at FedEx? I believe each airline has their own requirements, but I wanted to let you know what we require here at FedEx. We require an FAA-issued aircraft dispatch license, along with an associate's degree or equivalent, and one year of operational experience. That one year of operational experience could be given whether it be as a flight instructor, as a pilot working for um, an airline, ramp tower controller, uh, flight coordination, working as a ramp agent. There's a number of different um, jobs that can give you that one year of operational experience. So what are the benefits of a flight dispatcher? Um, so uh, we're required to work a minimum of 208 days a year. Um, which is about the equivalent of four days a week. Now that does, obviously we also have vacations and holidays and different things like that, but we offer a very competitive salary and we also have flight benefits, meaning that we not only can jump seat on FedEx aircraft, but we have the ability through CAS to jump seat on space available for a, a number of other different airlines as well, just like the um, pilots do. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about um, flight dispatching at FedEx and what our priorities are. Um, the GOC mission is to provide command and control of the FedEx line haul system while ensuring safety, service, and efficiency goals. So the FedEx network is obviously quite large because we reach globally. Um, we have roughly 678 aircraft and we fly to over 220 countries. It's an average of 900 daily flights. There is not a minute of every day that, an air, that a FedEx aircraft is in the air. And each one of those flights are planned by one of our flight dispatchers. So who is GOC and what do we do? So we are a coordinated command center, meaning that within our department, we have a C3 pod that has maintenance, uh, crew scheduling, a duty officer, global threat fusion, um, a technical flight dispatcher, and a hub control room agent in the same place so that whenever there is a need for a major discrepancy, we're all in the same place. Um, as we also have a contingency center located just uh, in, the, in our same town so that at any time we can make continuous um, control of our operation. There is never a loss of control because if for some reason we need to leave our main location, we, we launch at our other location simultaneously. For flight dispatch, even though we have network operation centers all over the world, all of our flights are dispatched from the United States actually in Memphis. It is not a requirement for a flight dispatcher to actually live in Memphis, but on the days that they work, they are required to dispatch out of our office. We are not a work from home operation because we have to maintain duty of flight. Now, one thing that is very unique to FedEx is that we also have a service recovery operation. And that is because service is just important to FedEx. Because we offer a money back guarantee, we have 
not only for every flight do we have a flight dispatcher, we have a service recovery specialist that is working in tandem to ensure that the freight gets to where it's supposed to be on time. So if for some reason there, ha there is a diversion or anything like that, while the dispatcher is working the diversion, the service recovery specialist is working to maintain that where we're diverting to, that it is operational, it has people on site, it has the capability and the equipment and they're ready to go. Um, each of our service recovery specialists are actually flight dispatchers as well, so that they know the regulations and, the, and what, is, what, is, what can be safely planned for a diversion. So a GOC flight time greater than six hours out from when a flight is scheduled to depart is when we begin a flight planning. And that's when we're looking at the MEL, the minimum equipment list, payloads, different weather restrictions, different things like that. And even prior to that six hours, if we're needing an aircraft that has an air special airflow in order to carry an animal shipment, that's routed out a few days even before that. But from six hours out is when we really start the flight planning and looking at ATC coordination and fuel calculations. As we get closer to departure, rough, roughly about two hours, that is when we're really refining our plan and coordinating with the crews and the ramps and doing all the, the last minute, and really making sure that we have the most accurate payload and fuel numbers. And then once an aircraft has departed, our job does not start, does not stop. It continues until that aircraft actually lands on the ground. And that's when we go into our flight following phase. And that's where we're ensuring that the route that we have planned is still the safest and more, most economical route if for some reason ATC has given our aircraft a different route, we're looking at that and running the numbers just to ensure that our fuel is gonna be good up and through the entire uh, length of the flight. And also if weather has changed or anything like that, we're ensuring that we're sending all the necessary new information to the crews so that they have the most up-to-date information available to them. So this is just an idea of when we go from the beginning of a flight planning process up until the end, and we're looking at um, all the different, from the aircraft tail assignments, and we load each of our flights and kind of go through, and then we make a first assessment of whether or not it's legal for dispatch. And if it's not legal, whether it's you know ice pellets or different things like that, things that we do not take off in, well then we stop there and then we'll try to find another way to move that flight or move that freight. But if it is still legal and able to, then we look to see if whether or not we need to add an alternate, different things like that. We're looking at max capacity, max load, if that is what is needed. We're looking at the, the captains to see if they're high mins or not, and if that's gonna affect the, the landing or um, takeoff minimums that are gonna be in that for that route. And then when, as it gets through, then we send it to the crew. And as far, if the crew agrees with what we've sent them, then we move on, the crew signs the flight release and it's planned. But if for some reason the crew is needing some additional changes or we need to discuss something, then that is the time that we do that. And if more changes, and if some changes need to be made, then we make that decision jointly with the flight crew and proceed on. Flight following. Flight following is a very important process to our job. You know, it's not just doing the planning before takeoff, but it's ensuring that the flight operates as we planned in a safe manner and monitoring weather, making sure that a thunderstorm line has not changed or has, if it's dissipated or if it's gotten bigger and making sure that we keep our aircraft safe and around it. And we have many tools that we use in order to uh, give us that information to proceed. We utilize Flight Explorer, Alert Messenger. Um, we have NOTAMs and we also have meteorology located in our department as well, um, just to make sure that we get the most accurate information. So the workload of GOC specialists is, de is dependent on which area of the department that you're working on. Uh, a general workload for a domestic flight is 20 to 30 flights over a period of eight and a half hours. Um, so it's, it's laid out based on when we have um, aircrafts coming in for a hub sort or departing out um, from a hub or from a sort. 
And then internationally, it is going to be six to 15 flights based on the workload, whether or not they're doing ETOPS planning or flying over the NAT tracks or the PACOX. And those require so many more iterations to ensure that we have the best information. It's the reason why the workload is the way that it is and distributed that way. One of the things that we do in GOC is that our flights are grouped regionally, whether it's domestically or internationally. So domestically, we divide our flights out of Northwest, Southwest, East, East Central, whatnot. And then internationally, we do um, North Pacific, South Pacific, Asia, Europe, whatnot, depending on the t time of day and how many dispatchers we need for that shift. As for communication, we, GOC uses many different forms of communication in order, for, in order to talk to the flight crew. We've got ACARS, SATCOM, and we also have VHF and HF ground patch. And then we use Flight Explorer position feeds to keep an accurate track of where the aircraft is. And that's fed through with ACARS and ANSP radar data. And then we're able to talk to ATC via phone or CETA a, a, a AFTAN um, communications. Um, and because we share joint operation control, if we need to speak to ATC, sometimes we actually need to talk to ATC to get through to you um, or to a crew member um, because of radio uh, failure or whatnot. So we have a number of different ways, number of tools available to us for communication. And 